Superior is as amazing as it is undocumented, and a month after its release, I'm still learning things. I've been using it every day, and I think it's high time I tell you what every setting does and how to get the best result possible. How good? Well, have a look at this. That's a 1500% restore and upscale. Or this image of the Disaster Girl meme, blown to a resolution I can't even pronounce, and that's starting from a paltry 420p and compressed to absolute oblivion. Or take this chibi generator that adds tons of detail to an AI generated image. One thing is sure, it's not easy, but once you wrap your head around it, Supir blows everything out of the water. Thank you James Smart for joining the channel, that's awesome and it helps me stay independent. Let's start with some basic usage advice. First, I understand your frustration. Workflows are distributed as if they were apps, but they're not apps. And I know from the comments, some of you are not getting the results they wanted. So please don't be demoralized. The fact is, the settings on most workflows have to be changed image by image. On complex workflows, I spend sometimes one to two hours per image. And that's not just superior, that's for every workflow out there. We learn by making mistakes while trying out new workflows and no one, no one knows it all. The only reason some people seem to be getting amazing results when you're not is simply that they're full-time on this, not because they're better than you. Let me demonstrate. User Sean Man on my Discord sent me this picture because he wanted to upscale it using the workflow I had uploaded, but for him it didn't work. We can see that the original is a little bit blurred and it could be a lot better. So let's have a look at what's happening here. The first comment he had was that Supir was very slow for him, whereas on my machine it would run in about 3 minutes. In his version of my workflow, he had left the scale factor at 4, but if we check, we can see that this image is already at 1024 by 1024. So we're going to put a scale factor of 1 so that we can iterate over the Supir settings over and over again much faster. Plus, in any case, Supir is not an upscaler, it's just a fancy control net. Let's check the Supir settings. Immediately, we can see the seed is the exact same as the workflow I had uploaded, which is usually an indicator that nothing's changed. And that's a real problem, because these settings are for the big truck image, not just any image. Sean's image specifically does not need to be restored, so let's the restoration scale to minus one, which is disabled. Second, the control net he has is way too loose. We already have a good image structure. We don't want to change it much. We just want to save it from damage when it actually gets upscaled. But that's a little bit advanced for now, so we're gonna circle back to this a little bit later in the video. Let's go check the model we're using. Yeah, it's Copax Timeless, an SDXL model that's going to require a certain configuration. And quite frankly, I'm not even sure if it's the right model for this specific image. So we need to check. Let's open a default workflow to which I added a few bells and whistles, but don't worry, there's nothing special in there really. Let's set it to Copax, but we need to know the CFG, steps, sampler, and schedule it requires. So we're going to open Civit AI, and we're noticing that the Lightning version, which we're using, needs 8 steps and a CFG of 1. We can also push the number of steps to up to 15 if we really wanted to, to add more detail, but we'll play with that later. Very importantly, we need a sampler of DMPP2M and a Kara scheduler. So we're going to head back to our default workflow, we're going to input those, done. Now. The problem is, we don't have a prompt. So let me show you something. I have updated the default Supir workflow to include WD Tagger, and I did that because I know it's all too easy to pass the same prompt over and over again to Supir when you in fact have multiple images. Let's leave all the WD Tagger settings to default because they work quite well as they are. This is going to create the prompt for us, which is super important because if we look at this gentleman's workflow, I think the main problem he had was that he was prompting Supir with a man dressed in an amusing outfit, highly detailed, etc., which obviously wasn't going to work. Still inside the default workflow, we want to make sure we're on copy Max Timeless, CFG1, and so on. We're using this prompt, creating from the picture we want. Let's hit the queue. Right, it's not bad, but it's not really the same image we wanted. Meaning, it's not going to play ball with Supir if we ever decide to loosen the control net. We need to try a new model. Personally, I had very good results on humans with Hello World Excel. So we're going to adjust the settings again, and we're going to repeat the process. I'm sure you understand what we're trying to do, right? It's about getting as close as possible to the original picture. We're going to go on Civit AI again, we're going to check the settings for the right model. Be careful here, because there's a lightning, non-lightning version, extra, extra. To get the settings, we click any image that relatively look like ours, and we notice that it's a 21 step CFG scale of 7 with DPM 2 Keras. Going back to our default workflow, we're going to input 30 for the steps, because that gives us a little bit more detail, a CFG of 7, and we're going to use the right scheduler and sampler. We quickly change our settings, and we hit Q. And I think in terms of matching the original picture, this output is actually really good. Sure, it's flipped horizontally, but it's quite good. 
Now, I can head back to my superior workflow, I can change the model to Hello World, adjust the steps, the CFD scale, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky, because superior could influence the settings, and I think that it might be a little bit too high at 7, I don't know if this is going to work, but I want to demonstrate the process to get the best result possible. And the best way to do things is by trial and error. And we should be about good to go. WD Tiger is a little bit annoying because it doesn't have an aggressive cache, which in effect nullifies the separation of the denoiser and the Super Control Net application, but we'll live with that. While we wait, let me show you something that's really important. For the first upscale, to try and recover the image, I initially used Lexikedat, but I have a lot of upscales model to choose from. You have to use the right one for the job, and that means the right one for this particular image. If you look carefully, you can see that there's a little bit of print grain on the original, which is to be expected, and this might be a photo from the print world, for example, and Lexikedat is not designed to correct this. So whatever it will output will be sent to the superior loader, diffused with the control nets, and re-upscaled. We will revisit this later in the video because it is very important. Another important settings, if you have VRAM issues, is to lower the precision and tile of every superior step, including the denoiser. And finally, be very, very careful with WD Tagger because you might want to use it once, copy the prompt and overload it with your own parameters that are more in line with the actual image. Sometimes it does get things wrong, especially gender. Now, let's have a look at the output. I can see the image has been really augmented, but unfortunately, the lines around her mouth are completely out of place. You can tell Supia did a good job at trying to transform the print grain into pores, but maybe the control net is set way too loose, so it's inventing too much detail. The other thing that strikes me immediately is this text that appeared on the cup. It looks out of place, and the cup itself looks like it's made out of shiny plastic, when in fact it should be paper. So it's time to go back to the drawing board and check every superior settings to make sure that we optimize for this specific image. First, let's think about this upscaler we're using. It can have a large impact, as I mentioned earlier. And if we look carefully here, we can see that while it's not doing a bad job per se, it appears that Lexikedat gives this very smoothed out look to the paper cup. And remember, that's what's passed to Superior's control net, so it's going to interpret that in some kind of way. And the higher the upscale, the more we're going to have this impact. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply disable the entire model upscaler, but we're going to keep the length so subscaler because that's obviously very much needed and it will leave the image untouched and sometimes that's how you get the best results it all depends on the type of image you pass we give it a value of three which should be largely sufficient because remember we're working already on a picture that's 1024 by 1024 anything above that is going to take considerably more than 24 gig of vram and then it's time to go and have a look at the superior setting so seed that's very straightforward just leave it where it's at since control after generate is set to fix it never changes, meaning the output never changes, so we're happy with this, gives us the consistency we need. Steps, we need a little bit more detail, we're going to push this to 40. As for the CFG scale, it's set considerably too high, I'm going to drop it to 3. I don't want my prompt to impact the image too much. Which brings us to this S noise and DPMPPETA, yeah, not the easiest thing to pronounce. S noise stands for Sigma noise, and it works hand in hand with DMPPETA to create a special effect. There's a fantastic article on Sanders art that explain exactly what it does and essentially it's a way to create a fake depth of field you can affect both parameters in a sudden way that will create this fake depth of field at lower value for sigma noise and likewise you can use it to create iterations over the output but think about it here we're using it to upscale an image we're not using it to create variations or anything like that so we need to set these values to a reference where we know they're not going to impact the image too much and of course that's one so sigma noise will be set to one and likewise DPMPPETA will stay at its original value of 1. Next, we have the control scale start and end. It simply defines the amount of impact you want the control net inside of the superior pipeline wrapped by Kijai's node. The lower the value, the more creative things will be. The higher the value, the more it's going to stay aligned with your image. So we're going to set things to 0.93 and 0.98. Eight. As for Restore CFG, it only works with EDM, so you can put whatever value you want in there. Minus one disables it, so we'll stick to minus one, and we'll cover it a little bit later in this video, so stay tuned. And we're pretty much set. Let's hit Q, and let's look at the result thanks to the magic of the internet. Wow, okay, that's a lot better indeed. 
Immediately, I'm noticing that the lines on our face are correctly interpreted by the superior control net and rendered exactly as I would expect them. The other thing I'm noticing is that the lips are very well rendered. The pores on the skin also went from this weird grain we were getting to actual pores. Very, very good result. The eyes are also surprisingly well rendered, adding a ton of detail, the eyelashes, even the lacrimal grains. And of course, the text that bothered us is gone. And finally, the paper cup itself is much better rendered. And that's of course because we disabled the use of Lexicadat as an upscale model. When you do this test, you need to be very, very aware of the appearance of potential extra hair in the image. Now, Supir has this thing where it just creates more and more hair, sometimes to the point of being almost dwelling into the horror levels. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so here it didn't happen, thankfully. The other and final thing you need to check for is that your bokeh was preserved. And here we can see that despite having just pixels to work with, Supir was smart enough to understand that this stuff should be out of focus. So overall, I'm very, very happy with the results especially when you look at the size of the image we managed to get here, 9,000 pixels by 9,000 from an original of 1024 by 1024. Very, very good output indeed. So now let's explore how we need to change the settings if we had a different image. And we're going to use, of course, the big red car image. All right, to demo this, I'm going to use Float, where I host most of my workflows. I'm going to go find my Super Edition. By the way, I've updated it to contain all the changes we're talking about here today. Now I'm going to press Try on Cloud. I'm going to change the name to Super Test, press Create Flow, and bang, here we are. The first thing we need to do is change the image. The good thing about Float is that it has all the models preloaded. You don't have to worry about anything else but changing your image. Let's check the settings as well. We got an initial upscale at Two, which is what's going to be passed to Supir, and it's using Lexicadat. The other thing is, of course, now we have WD Tagger, so you don't have to worry about having to change the prompt every single time. And in terms of settings, it's very, very similar to the ones we've just used with the image of the lady. Let's hit run and let's see what it gives us. And while this is running, just one quick comment about the final Lexus update. It takes a lot of regular RAM, not VRAM, regular RAM. So if you have limited RAM, you might want to bring this down to something more reasonable based on the size of the image you've already passed to Supir. We notice that WD Tagger, it's doing its job as expected. But first, let's have a look at the upscale itself. And here, there is literally zero difference. So what's happening is Lexicadat is not designed to DJPEG images. You have to use something else like Omni DJPEG or something similar for that. But do we really need to use a DRT factor? Think about what we've done so far. It's a little bit of homework here. Why are we getting terrible results? What's the reason you think? I'll give you a little clue. This is what happens if you try to loosen the control net. Of course, that's half the answer. The artifacts are gone, but the image is now blurry. So why is this image blurry? Well, if we go look at our W tagger, we can see that it's reading from the original image, which is highly compressed and it's read as exactly what it is, blurry. So we're going to need to override this WD tagger prompt. And this is something that you need to be very careful about in general. W tagger can make mistakes. Sometimes it's good to inspire yourself from it, but not necessarily to just trust it. So in this case, I'm going to use a red car in the mountains as opposed to a red Jeep, because when I use the word Jeep, I noticed that it would actually try and draw the words Jeep on the vehicle, which of course, stable diffusion is not really great at for the time being. So we're going to use a car. Right, we're almost there, but we need to change a few settings. Namely, let's lower the control net. So we give more creativity to Supir. Now it's very, very sensitive. By that, I mean, if the image is really damaged, the higher the settings you'll use here, the more it will have an impact on the image and vice versa. But we'll touch back on that in a second. For now, let's go and change the settings. We want to set the control net start to say 0.8. We'll change the control scale end to something reasonable, 0.85. Again, as I said, it's sensitive. So be be careful and you'll have to iterate a lot. And likewise, we need to change our CFG. The two work hand in hand. So we're going to put 1.2 and 1.2 respectively at start and end. And we'll run it. Uh, let's look at the output. Wow. Okay. This is really nice. This reminds me a bit of, you know, the movies where they say enhance, enhance. Now it's, it's truly wonderful that it's able to take this blur of pixel and convert it into something meaningful. That's what makes Supir really exciting and the best upscaler out there. 
Once you're satisfied with the output, you want to change the final image resize through length source to something higher because you want an even bigger image. And that's how you can get the super ultra HD scale. Now, let's go back to something very important. This is the tip I was telling you about. Of course, I can use two, three, four, five even in terms of value for the original rescale. But there is a correlation between how Supir behaves and the number you place in there, depending on the size of the original file and if the file is extraordinarily damaged like it is here. A smaller value will work better and will give you more leeway with the parameters of Supir than a higher value and not necessarily worse results. In fact, better results. The two are tightly intertwined. And that's because Supir is not using the pipeline you think it's using. It's its own pipeline. I highly recommend you go check out their GitHub page, which is different from the Kijai page, but the page by the author of the code that Kijai's node wraps. And you'll see it's a completely different world. That being said, it's SDXL compatible, including with Lightning. Here, I can switch to Lightning through Copac, say, for example, switch the number of steps to 12 instead of 40. And I've just saved myself a lot of time. Of course, this means, again, having to potentially reconfigure all this, but it's worth it, especially if you don't have a lot of VRAM or a fast machine, or if you're not on the cloud. Now, maybe you've seen this short video I've made for YouTube, which is this amusing infinite zoom thing on Disaster Girl. I used the original image from a meme generator, which was so tiny that if you have to look at it through iCat, you need a 1500% upscale for it to work in split screen. And I think this is where Supir really, really shines, taking an image that people expect to be permanently damaged and get more detail out of it, which wasn't there before. And remember, this is just for YouTube short, so I didn't go into to too much effort to completely correct it. But I really like how it's able to create a 1500% zoom on a human eye. And I'm thinking of using this further to create more amusing videos. Now note, however, that if you're working in photography or things like that, if you don't have the CFG parameter perfect, you will get this little hair on the image that appears here and there. And of course, you might want to correct it with Photoshop, or you might want to do what I did, which is iterate, iterate, iterate over and over and over in Confi until you're satisfied with the output. Photoshop's probably easier. Let's get back to some serious stuff. This is a very simple implementation of the new V2 IP adapter, which generate new pictures based on two sets of faces you pass it. Very simple stuff. It's using Face ID plus V2. The only downside, of course, is that it's using SD 1.5 because full face is SD 1.5 only. So 512 by 512. Solution, let's use Supir. And if you look at the workflow that I've used here, you'll notice immediately that I've disabled the upscale model. Now, why is that? Well, this is going back to what I was telling you earlier. On first glance, the images are absolutely identical. But on the left hand side, we have the Lexicadat version, which is a very large, excellent model for rescale. And on the right hand side, just good old fashioned length source being used. So when I zoom in, you may notice these very strong marks around the eye, almost like some sort of eyeshadow. And that's Lexicadat kicking in and adding detail, including wrinkles and so on, making them stronger. And that's going to be passed to Supir. And Supir, will make it even larger and amplify it even more. And that's why whenever you upscale something, superior or no superior, you have to use the right upscaler. In my case, I've organized them by size. The larger ones at the top, the smaller one at the bottom. Now let's try Reboo, for example. Reboo is extremely popular right now, so why not? I'm going to re-enable upscale by model. I'm going to disable the phase two of the superior. And here we go. And you can see immediately that this smaller ultra fast model has completely wiped out all the detail of the image. The face looks flat and almost plasticky in nature. It's terrible. Now let's try another one. Let's try 4X Ultra Sharp because it's a good old rounder and it's extraordinarily popular as well. There you go. So again, the image looks a little bit nicer than Rebu, of course, but check out the beard. It's completely messed up. And I've noticed 4X Ultra Sharp do this very specific effect with facial hair over and over again. Not to mention the skin is also completely wiped out, just like it was in Rebu. Now, I want to give you a sense of scale for these, well, upscales. <laughs> uh, if I put them side by side, 
you can see that I won't even be able to get it on screen unless I use iCAD to change the scale resolution to 1500%. So these are very, very large upscales indeed, showing that it's completely possible. I really like what it does on the eyes, for example. And this, again, did not use a model. It simply used a basic length source to do its job and it did it wonderfully well. So I guess the lesson here is that it's not because something is in a workflow that you have to use it. It's just one of the many ways you can have achieved this result. There's nothing arbitrary in workflow and that's what makes them beautiful in my opinion. All right, now it's time to look at picture restoration, which I know is very, very in demand right now. This is a very naive approach that I've taken. I've used pretty much the usual settings. We see that it's blurry. We see that it also retained a lot of the problems from the original picture, namely it was torn apart. Let's try and change this a little bit. A pretty naive approach would be to increase the CFG with the understanding that we already have a control scale start and end that's already really low. Let's look at the results. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's certainly better than any upscaler I know of, but look at these weird shadows that it's created. I think it's trying to reinvent a beard. And also the bit of the picture that was torn apart on the lips is still present. In addition, I'm noticing something very strange about my eyes. And that's of course, because I accidentally again left WD Tiger alone and it's put one girl in there. So let's change it back to a boy. And now sure enough, the eyes are corrected. You see how it added this weird eye shadow type thing? It's quite clever actually but evidently in this case it's not needed. So then the question is how do we restore it to its original quality or above? And for that we need to remember what we talked about before. We said that the restore CFG did not work with the DPMT2 sample. So if you look at my new settings here you can see that I've put 5 and 0.8. Nothing's changed. It's the same thing but I switched the sampler from restore DPM PP2M to the tiled restore EDM sampler and I've set the restore CFG to something really really high 20. That's the absolute maximum. I really, really wanted these things corrected. It might be a little bit over the top, but hey, I'm pretty confident this is going to work. So I'm going to switch the last upscale back up to a factor of four. And here we go. Uh, I think this is really impressive. Again, if you told me this would be possible in 2024, I would have said you're crazy, but Supir really is incredible. It even got the color of my eyes correct. They're green and brown at the same time, and it did a fantastic job on the lips. They're completely accurate. The pores on the skin are completely accurate. It's added a ton of detail, and it's even changed the buttons on the shirt. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. Probably this is something you might want to handle through Photoshop or something similar, because you're going to end up spending way Way too much time in Supir to correct all this. Now, because the prompt said mole, it picked this black spot on my face, which was simply the picture being damaged and added a mole. So I probably should put mole into the negative prompt. But for now, I think this is absolutely incredible and excellent in terms of quality. There's a lot of fun things we could do with this. Restore old photos, of course, but I think you can imagine how we could become really, really creative with this. And I have a short YouTube videos coming up on that too. Okay, I know this is getting to be a bit of a long video by my standards and it took me a good six days to record it, but I think it's worth digging into one last thing is how do we add detail to pictures. So let's look at this quick workflow, which is my Chibi Creator. It's an IP adapter that changes the face into the face of the character that you want to generate. And it uses this system of static prompts that are randomly generated because I didn't want to use an LLM because I know you guys like speed. And I think the output speaks for itself. If we compare the base image that's not super enhanced to the image that's super enhanced, you can see that it's adding this hyper real look, which I really enjoy. And that's because I'm using an SDXL model that can't do anime for the SDXL pass. It adds a lot of detail already. I mean, it, it changes the earring to something that looks like little seashells. And that's because the prompts that I've passed to Supir as well are designed to generate things that look doll-like and childish-like, which I think is quite fun for this type of image. And likewise, it's really, really clever. I mean, look what it's doing with this patch of orange. It knows it needs to simulate some sort of natural light as opposed to trying to invent a detail that wasn't there. And likewise, when it does see a patch of color, like it does here, it creates this little cute patch that you would see on socks or shoes or things like that. And finally, it does also add a lot of textures. So on those antlers, it knows it's an antler, so it's going to give it that wood texture. And likewise, the moon also get textured. Every time I look at these images, I can't help myself but find new details. But what about the big details, things like the books and stuff like that? So for that, I'm using LoRa's on the SD 1.5 model that's used to create the images themselves. So they have to all be SD 1.5 compatible. You can use LoRa with Supir, but of course you'll have to use SDXL LoRa's. 
Let's look at the output. On the right hand side I have the image without the LoRa's and on the left hand side the image that had the details added. And as you can see it added books, it added lots of objects and so on and so forth. And again the reason it's able to do that is because every part of the workflow has access to the prompt through a set get type node. You could go and change the superior parameters by the way. Nothing stops you from changing them. I put 0.80 because I wanted it to be a little bit creative but nothing stops you from say lowering this or changing the CFG scale if you feel the image are a little bit too burnt. One thing we could do is change the steps to 60, for example, to really squeeze that last bit of performance out of Supir. But it would obviously be also a little slower. But I think it paid off and I think it looks really nice indeed. So in terms of model, I'm using Rev Animated because that's the one that's really compatible with my LoRa. And for the Supir pipeline, I use Leo Sam Hello World for that extra realism. The other thing you'll notice is that the image that comes out of the case sampler is a little bit desaturated. I'm using an image saturation node and that's going to give it that little oomph. It's a little bit over the top again but I'm going for that style. And likewise I have a color match node at the end of the pipeline which is not really needed because Supir has a built-in color correction. And one final thing, I really like those little question marks you get on Confi these days. I think it's really convenient to have inline help and of course this will depend on which node set you use. Some of them implement it, some of them don't. If you want to give this a shot, I have my little page on Floaty where I'm starting to add more and more of my workflows. You simply click it, you can click the download button if you want to download it and run it locally or you can hit try on the cloud and just like last time create a copy you start the instance and then you probably want to turn on superior add the prompt that reflects the image and off you go Oh, and I just spotted that. I love the way it's doing the shadows on this cave walls. I really love the look of the rocks. This this mix of real and fake. I think it works very well visually. If this video was useful, please consider giving it a like or subscribe. It really, really helps pushing this type of content to people who really need it. And as usual, if you have any question about any of the workflows you've seen today or questions about Superior itself, I'm on Discord pretty much 24-7. We have a support channel. We even have specific conversations around workflows, things of that nature. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you guys. And as usual, there should be some videos on your screen that you will enjoy because YouTube says so and YouTube is never wrong. See you in the next one, guys. Thank you again so much for watching.